Hey, Logan. Uh, you got to live at home for most of your junior career. What's this year been like living out on, you know, in Austin first and then right now with, with Wyatt and, and the Pavelskis? What's that like and who's the better driver? Uh, it's been a big change. Uh, I think I've grown up a lot this year. Um, like you said, being able to live at home, it's a lot different. Home cooked meals, sleeping in your own bed, and a lot of stuff's done for you. So uh, this year I was kind of on my own, had to find my own apartment down in Austin and cook my own meals and, you know, uh, figure out my time management skills too. So uh, it was all part of it. But, uh, you know, I think it's made me a better person. I'm the better driver too. <laughs> we'll go a second row right to Ryan. Why you, your team has really flipped a switch in the second period the last couple of games. What's it like? What do you notice when you guys go from on your heels to all of a sudden dictating the way you are? What's it like to be part of that? What do you notice in your game? Uh, yeah, it's great. I mean, we have that, you know, the patience, the confidence. Um, definitely haven't started, you know, like we, we want to. But, um, yeah, I mean, it's, you know, I think we've, done a really good job all year and especially in these playoffs with I mean if we don't have a great period we kind of you know take that intermission and kind of regain our thoughts and kind of settle down a bit and make sure we're coming out strong in the next period um, I mean you know responses are so important in playoffs and um, yeah I mean we're just you know I think you know our experience and you know all the guys who've played so many games kind of helps bring that you know patience to um, you know just get back to our game. Uh, third row on the left Mark Wyatt, I know there haven't been a lot of penalties to kill in this series, but you guys have done a really good job doing that. Um, what are you seeing from ice level that's working so well for you? Um, I mean, obviously you, you know, try to get to learn their tendencies, but, um, you know, with a team like yours, with all the, you know, great players they have on their power play, it's, you know, you just got to, you know, be able to have good reads, you know, react. Um, you know, they're going to they're gonna make plays, and it just kind of comes down to, you know, blocking shots. You know, Jakey's made some some great saves. Um, just kind of those kind of intangibles in playoffs that kind of help you kill some big penalties, just having those details and, um, you know, block shot or a huge save when needed. Fourth row on the left, Josh. Wyatt, I'm just you, you've been teammates with Jake for, for a couple years now. I'm just wondering what stands out to you about his ability to reset and refocus, all the things bother him. I mean, it was a tough first eight minutes. I mean, those, those goals weren't his fault, but still, like, you know, it's 2 nothing in a loud building, and then he just doesn't let in the next one. Uh, what stands out about, about his demeanor and how he goes about his business? Uh, he, yeah, it's, uh, I mean, it's a lot of, you know, it's awesome to be playing in front of him. Um, yeah, I mean, his, his response is, has always been so good. I mean, you know, we did not put him in a very good spot to start that game, and um, it could have been a lot worse for us if he didn't, you know, make some, some huge saves. So, um, yeah, I mean, it's our job to try to, you know, play our best in, in front of him. But, I mean, he's covered up a lot of our mistakes, and, I mean, he's just, you know, such a calming presence in it. Um, you know, it gives us a lot of confidence having him back there. And, yeah, I mean, he's, you know, he lets in one or two, and, you know, the game can get away from us pretty easily. But, you know, he, he stays strong, and he makes some huge saves to, you know, keep us in the game. And then, then we're kind of able to, you know, kind of find our game back again at, once the second period starts. Back row on the left. Hey, Wyatt, can you bring us inside the room during that first intermission last night? What was said? Who's saying the message? And how much do you think that impacted the comeback? Uh, I mean, you know, obviously, you know, the leadership guys like Jamie Ben, um, Joe Felsky, just kind of the older guys that, you know, have been around. Um, I mean, we all, we all knew it wasn't a good period for us. And, um, you know, they it definitely, you know, felt like they were the hungry team it definitely you know i'm sure it looked like that um and yeah it was just yeah win battles and and win races i mean that's so important this time of the year you know you can have all those x's and o's and um none of that really matters if you're not you know winning puck battles getting pucks back so um yeah i think you know the leadership guys in the room and then obviously you know the coaching staff pete um you know that was a you know big message from him back right david Hey guys, it could be for either of you. Uh, you know, you guys were down two games to love. You go into Vegas, take those next two games. Colorado, you sweep all three games in a tough building there. It was super loud in the first period here last night. How has this team been able to just collect itself and be so calm and, you know, able to really play your best hockey on the road so far this postseason for either of you guys? Um, I think it just goes back to the leadership group. 
A um, lot of older guys in the team that have played in, in big games over their careers, and um, there just seems to be no panic in the room, no matter the score or you know how many games we're down in the series. Uh, I think everyone kind of looks to those guys, and you know when they're speaking, we listen and make sure that uh, we stick together. Take a couple more. Second row left, Leah. Uh, for either of you guys, you've got some teammates who have played in a hundred of these games before, but both of you, first and second year, are you able to enjoy this experience playing in a building like this, realizing you know, you're in the Western Conference Finals, or is it hard to do that in this time of year? Uh, I think a little bit of both. Um, you know, want to make sure you're focused on the game and uh, making sure you're in you know, a good spot to um, you know, play, put your best game forward, but I mean, it's hard not to just kind of soak it all in a little bit, you know, especially, you know, maybe during, you know, the, the anthem and stuff like that, and you're just kind of, you know, listening to the building, sing, you know, the Canadian anthem, and um, I mean, it's, it's pretty cool. It's, you know, I know it's what pretty much all of us dream, dream of growing up is playing in the Stanley Cup playoffs, and um, I mean, yeah, it's, you know, try your best to, you know, soak it all in as much as you can, but at the same time, yeah, you want to be, you make sure you're, you're dialed in and not, uh, you know, not letting kind of all the, you know, distractions get to you. Last one, third row on the right, Eric. Uh, Logan, you joined the team later in the season. Were you at all surprised by just how calm and composed this team always seems to be, no matter how much adversity you're facing in a game or in a series? Yeah, it's a good thing to have, for sure. Um, I've been able to learn lots from those guys and, just see what makes them such good players. And um, I think it's nice just to have those guys to look up to and kind of lead the way for us. So um, yeah, it's not easy kind of coming up uh, later in the year. And uh, I just wanted to try and do my thing and fit in. And, and those guys have made me really feel a part of the team.